guys, and welcome to Explain It Like I'm Five. In today's episode, I will be answering the question, will the sun explode? The sun is a star, and if you've learned anything about stars, then you know that they go through a series of cycles, usually ending in an explosion. Now, I don't know about you, but the thought of our sun, the thing that provides the Earth with light and heat and energy exploding, is kind of terrifying. <laughs> However, you don't have to worry about the sun exploding, because the sun is too small of a star to end its life in an explosion. That being said, the sun, like all stars, will eventually die, but not for billions and billions of years. All of us, and all of YouTube, will all be long gone. <laughs> Before I take you through the process of the death of our sun, I will start by explaining how a star is formed. A star is born out of a nebula, or a cloud of hydrogen gas and dust. Once it becomes a star, it forms into a globe of gas producing its own heat and light by nuclear reactions called nuclear fusion. Stars are made up of mostly hydrogen and helium gas. This is the phase that our sun is currently in. The sun has been producing energy for 4.6 billion years, but it only has another 7 billion years worth of fuel. Only. In order to make energy, the sun converts hydrogen into helium at its core. The more helium created by the sun, the more and more it burns hydrogen. This causes an increase in the output of the sun. In about a billion years, the output of the sun will increase by 10%. This is not good for the Earth. When the sun is 10 times brighter, the extra energy will cause a moist greenhouse effect, but then the Earth's atmosphere will dry out. In 3.5 billion years, the sun will be 40 times brighter than it is right now. The excessive heat will cause oceans to boil, ice caps to melt, and snow won't be a thing anymore. No life will be able to survive on the Earth. It's weird because I always thought the sun had to, like, burn out before it would kill us all. But it actually just becomes too hot in its process of becoming a red giant that it would just kill everything on the planet because of the excessive heat. So, the death of the sun... I don't know why I'm so cheery about it. It's kind of sad. It's like, it's like our sun, you know? It's like our thing, and it's like, it's gonna die eventually. So eventually, and by eventually I mean six billion years from now, the sun's core will run out of hydrogen. And this is when the sun becomes a red giant. As it keeps growing in size, it will consume the orbits of Mercury, Venus, and most likely Earth. Even if the Earth had survived the brighter sun, the intense heat from the red giant sun would burn up everything on Earth, making it impossible for life to survive. After about 100 million years as a red giant, burning helium, this time into carbon, the sun will begin blasting off its layers, or planetary nebula, leaving only a central core of carbon. This is the white dwarf phase. It's still really hot, and it will take a trillion years to cool down. Can you imagine how hot that is? What if you made cookies and they took a trillion years to cool down? <laughs> you couldn't eat them for tr a trillion years. Think about how long that is. And sadly, this marks the death of our precious and beloved sun. Not even being sarcastic, the sun is so important to us. And to our life and our ability to live on the earth. <laughs> but to answer the question, will the sun explode... As I said before, it will not. This is because it has a relatively low star mass. It's a much more peaceful way to go. <laughs> it's the big stars that experience more violent death in an explosion called a supernova. And then they either turn into a neutron star or a black hole. It's kind of cool. Um, black holes always fascinated me. Maybe I'll do an episode on black holes. <laughs> so we don't really have to worry about the sun burning out or destroying the planet because it gets too big and hot anytime soon. <laughs> so we'll be all right. But eventually, yes, the sun will die. And no, it will not explode. Um, I love space, so I'll probably be doing a lot more stuff about space and... A lot of my science episodes will probably be space related. Like I said, black holes would be a cool one to do. So if you guys have other questions about space or things in space, or I mean any topics really in general, um, definitely leave comments and I will answer those questions for you. Um, but so I hope this kind of ease your mind about the <laughs> inevitable death of the sun 
um, or if you were worried that I was going to explode, or if you were worried that I was going to die while you were still on Earth, or anything like that, um, <laughs> you don't have to worry. Don't panic. <laughs> I got my information from a couple different places, and I'll leave some links to um, other topics that I briefly touched upon, but if you want more information about, and they will all be in the description box below, as usual. Um, I hope you enjoyed my video today. Um, give it a thumbs up, of course, if you enjoyed it, and tune in for next week, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. <laughs> I guess that's it. Um, I feel like I should keep talking and rambling and <laughs> my the ends of the end of my videos are always longer than my actual video. <laughs> Bye guys. In today's episode, I will be discussing difficult homophones. Homophones are just words that are spelled differently but sound the same. The words that I am going to discuss in this episode today are there, there and there, your and your and its and its. <laughs>